remember that nine out of 10 investments aren't gonna work out. So make sure they have enough capital to invest wisely. Also remember that most investments are only should be done with 10% of your money. So pay yourself first, live within your means so you have more money. Um, but literally, I mean, I still do this today. I have 10 investments, nine of them fail, one successful. So let's say I invest a million dollars into each of those, but the one that wins makes 20 million, but I lost nine million on the other. I'm up $11 million, everyone thinks I'm a genius, nobody talks about the nine failures. So it's a, it's a numbers game. So you can get better and better as you lose more money. But. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You need to do things consistently, why? Because what happens is, when we do something every day, we have a cellular memory. And this includes kindness, it includes being of service, it includes being happy, it includes practicing whatever skill set that you think you need. But if you do it every single day, it gets into your cellular memory. And then it goes from your cellular memory into your subconscious. And what happens when it's in your subconscious is there's neural pathways that are formed in your brain that make things more efficient and effective for what you want. Simply by doing it every day for a certain amount of time. You're not too small to be a multimillionaire. You're not too small to change the world. You're not too small for anything. It doesn't matter. It's only what you perceive. And the way that you get there is consistency. I'm a big believer every single day you have to be focused. Persistency comes from consistency. You cannot quit and you have to be inspired. Enjoy the pursuit of your potential. Yep. I've been trying to write this book and do more public speaking. I do it now, but whatever I need to do to get 10 minutes, 15 minutes of your time for me is traveling. I'll do it. I just need to carve out that time to pick your brain, share a little bit of my story, and get your help to get my career and my personal life to that next level. Answer is yes. Yes. Colleen in the corner will schedule that for you. Please listen to what he just said. That's how you ask for help. Right? I need 10 minutes of your time. Right? Show the respect that, you know, people ask me all the time, hey, can you invest in my company? And they write this long, long thing that doesn't belong on text or LinkedIn or anywhere, even email. And my response is always, send me a business plan. But yeah, I've got to see, there's a billion great ideas out there, but I want to see a plan on how to monetize it, how to make money from it. And that's what a business plan does. And I'm happy to help you. I got a tell you know, I don't have a business plan. Here's a template. This is one of the best ones that I've seen. There's always a help. That's how you ask for help. And if somebody tells you they don't have 10 minutes for something, they're not living. Remember when you make a call and two things can happen. One, they pick up. Two, they don't. If they don't, you have one objective. That's to get them to call you back. Never sell on an answering machine. At the tone, Let me teach you how message. to leave a message. Recording, you may Dave Meltzer or style, statistical success, years options. of experience. Hi, this is Dave. Thank you so much. We had scheduled a call at this time, but I'm sure you're caught up on the other line or in a meeting you can't get out of. Uh, please give me a call back. I am at 949-298-2905. That's 949-298-2905. That's actually my text number, by the way. And that's how you leave a message. Notice I left my number twice. Notice I took all the energy out of the resistance and the shortages and the voids that I allowed them to have an excuse that they must be in a meeting or a line that they can't get off of. I gave them the opening to call me back. I gave my text number, 949-298-2905. But I did it twice because how many times, especially if you talk fast like me to people on their phone, just go ahead and hang up because they don't have a pain, they don't pen or they don't have the time to get that number down. So make sure you say that number twice, slowly and articulate it correctly. Only one thing you're worried about when people don't answer, that's to get them to call you back. Do not sell on the phone. Nobody buys off an answering machine, just remember that. In fact, I've learned, I don't even say sorry anymore. You know, one of the CEOs who I love, she came in and, and I said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I'm running a little behind. And she said, shame on you. I said, what? She goes, you should know better. You're, you're the gratitude guy. What kind of energy 
does I'm sorry have? It's a scarce energy. It's a diminishing energy. Say thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for, that's an empower, it makes us feel good. Way better, just because I say sorry, that makes you feel worse. We can't feel bad enough for someone that feels bad. Right, we can't be sick enough for someone that's sick. I can't be poor enough for someone that's poor. That's why I believe in creating a great flow of, of money because it's an energy so it can come through me and empower other people. Everything, life comes through me for everyone else. That's what expands. Another way that we ask your question is, David, what would you teach your 17-year-old self? <laughs> yeah. Two words, write it down, put it next to your bed. I hide it all over the place, including on my phone, is radical humility. Radical humility. Humility, you need to ask people for help. The, the, the coolest thing about being your age is everybody my age wants to help you. And the bad thing about being your age is you think by asking for help that you're diminishing your capacity. I wish I would have asked for help. So I would have saved all my money. Um, and I know I didn't touch on this, John. I would like to right now. People don't make bad decisions. They make bad assumptions. I lost all my money not because I made a bad decision. I made one bad assumption and I lost everything. One bad assumption. Now, if I asked for help and had radical humility, I never would have made that assumption. But I made one bad assumption. So you've got to be more interested than interesting before you make, saying, what am I making this decision based on? What assumptions am I making it on? If you're a doctor, you could give 99 of the right things to do to someone, make one bad assumption, and they're dead. Oh, I just assumed it was on the left side, <laughs> right? Oh, I assumed they weren't allergic to that. Meanwhile, everything else you did, procedure, if everyone reads the checklist manifesto, it goes through how doctors are supposed to read through a checklist of like a hundred, just like pilots, pilots always look at the checklist when they're a passenger. But the pilot that is actually, right, they never look at the checklist, <laughs> right? Because they, they think they have it all under control. You got, the assumption I made, by the way, just so you, you know, because I like to pass on the lesson, is I always assumed that the bank would let me borrow against the, the equity I had, a secured interest. I just always assumed that I owned all this equity and property and that when hit, shit hit the fan, I'd just go borrow another 10 million and I'd be fine. Little did I know from that assumption that banks could get in trouble and they would rather have my property than give me money on my property. <laughs> Right, because they'd rather have my money, basically. And they'd rather say, nah, instead of letting you borrow that, I'd rather sell it to somebody else and keep all the money myself because we're gonna foreclose on you. Bad assumption. And all I had to do is ask one person in finance going, dude, I own $100 million in property. Uh, I have about 40 million in equity. What's the best way that I can protect myself to make sure I'm liquid? And there's tons of people that could have answered that question for me. Radical humility. Always ask yourself, instead of, you gotta learn for yourself, but accelerate your learning by asking someone that sits in the situation that you wanna be in and learn from that as well as your experience. It's a bullshit answer. I wanna do it myself because I wanna experience myself. No, accelerate your experience by asking for help. That's bullshit. I lie to myself that way all the time. I gotta do it myself. No, I could have done it myself and been ahead of the ball game by asking smart guys like John, saying, hey man, you've made millions of dollars. Can you help me do this? And then learn from what he tells me my own experience instead of, no, I'll do it myself, man. Your, your way must suck. <laughs> well, if it sucked, then learn that. What sucks? You could be, like I used to say, I have the best dad in the world because I learned how not to be a dad. Just saying. You can be used as a good example or a bad example, right? Great question. I can look at a resume all day long. Harvard, Penn, Columbia you know, and 4.0, we're at 5.0s now, uh, you know, unbelievable test scores and, you know, they're in the business fraternity and, you know, they're on the fencing team or, and, but yet when I'm with them, I feel like this, right? I want someone that's going to rock me, right? I want someone that has fire in their belly that sits there and is like, look, I may not be the brightest, strongest, fastest, smartest, but I'm here and I'm not gonna quit on you.
Every day, I'm going to be engaged in your business and coming up with good ideas, and I'm willing to do what it takes. That's what I'm looking for. If you want to go into interviews, make yourself equal. That's fine. Everyone has grades, everyone has classes, everyone's going to graduate. But then make yourself different by what are your personal values? What are your experiential values? What are your giving values? And what are your receiving values? Can you rock somebody? Can you make them feel good? Because that's who they're going to want to be around. I tell people, say thank you before you go to bed and when you wake up. It took me nine months to do that for 30 straight days. Me, I'm teaching it. I, I, I would miss a day. Oh shit, I forgot to say thank you last night. I know this is the best way to change my life, to have gratitude in my soul. Not just in my subconscious or conscious, in my soul. So that when people attack me, I'm grateful. They're not happy. Happy people don't attack you. It's almost physically impossible. You ever see someone cracking up and be like, while they're, no, there's no attacks. They're not saying anything bad. They're not thinking anything bad. They're not acting on anything to hurt you. Not when you're laughing and happy. If somebody attacks you, it's for one reason. They are not happy with themselves. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. There's the universal law of no. I allow the universe to let things happen at its own time, the right way at the perfect time. With me pushing, I only push three times. The no's aren't necessarily someone saying no. It could be, hey, I gotta cancel because you know this happened, or my tire's flat. No matter how legitimate the excuses are, the universe gives me three no's. My conversion is always, hey, obviously it's not the right time, emotion, or place. Unfortunately, I, don't, I won't be able to pursue this anymore, so when you are ready, please let me know. Of course, I'd love to, to do business with you. Believe it or not, 50% of the time, utilizing the universal law of no, 50% of the time, they end up doing it. Whatever it was, Isn't right? That? Doing the meeting, closing the deal, whatever I've been waiting for, uh -huh. the other 50% of the time, I never hear from again. I've automatically just saved 50% times however many pursuits that I was on. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You're the aggregate of the five people that you hang out with the most. You're the aggregate of what you watch, what you listen to, what you learn, what you read. That's what you are. And don't lie to yourself. That's what you are. In fact, I'd even go as far as when you get older, when you take your five best friends, you'll make about the mean of what your five best friends make. There's a certain collective belief that happens. So be very aware of who you hang out with.